okay, this is for you if you have a child who, when you try to validate how they're feeling and respond emotionally intelligently, they say, no, I am not frustrated. That's not it. You're wrong. Don't tell me how to feel. So whew, I remember working with a particular parent, probably actually over, over one year ago, maybe two years ago now. And we were talking about the importance of valid validating our kids emotions when they are upset, angry, mad, anxious, um, you know, all of those, what we would call, I guess, unpleasant emotions. And she described how her son would often react even more when he was frustrated or angry, when she would validate and try to acknowledge how he felt. So we had this whole discussion around it, and I think it's something that's really important for parents to just be aware of. It's not, I don't want to micromanage people's responses to their children when there are big emotions flying around. But if you have a kid who you know reacts that like hugely when you try to acknowledge and validate how they're feeling, then this video is going to help you. So a couple of reasons why when you might validate or tell your child, I get that you're feeling so upset, nervous, worried, scared, angry, that they might react and erupt even more. Sometimes it's like adding fuel to the fire. You know that feeling? <laughs> Sometimes we inadvertently do that and we don't realize and you know we don't do it intentionally. We're trying to help our child, but it can just make things worse. So let me tell you a couple of reasons and I want to give you some examples as well, just to kind of um, help absorb why this happens with some kids, um, why, you know, it won't happen with every child. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that have a think about when we, when our kids are what I would call emotionally hijacked. Um, I'm sure I've done some other videos on the emotional hijack. Maybe I've done some reels on Instagram or some other videos on YouTube. I know I've written about it as well. So the emotional hijack, even just Google it quickly <laughs> because it's that reaction that we have when our emotions take over, right? Our emotional part of our brain, our limbic system, our amygdala senses this threat, right? And we flip into the anger or the, um, even the anxiety, you know, the fear. So when we're emotionally hijacked, remember, our emotions go high, our logic goes low. We, we can, and kids can essentially kind of switch off that logical part of their brain. So when we try to validate that our kids are frustrated or upset or whatever it is, this can feel um, really embarrassing or shameful for our kids because they know they're feeling yucky. They don't feel good. It feels yuck. It feels awful. I'm really mad. I don't like this. Like their whole body is dysregulated. We know that they're in low or high level fight or flight, right? So it's uncomfortable. It's stressful. The body is physiologically in, in a state of stress. <laughs> it doesn't feel nice. Think about it when you're pissed off about something <laughs> or you're really um, upset or you're really, you know, disappointed. They are uncomfortable feelings. It doesn't always feel, um, it's not always helpful and productive to some when we um, kind of analyze that feeling and, um, you know, reflect it back to our child. So it feels yucky. Our kids can feel embarrassed about how they're feeling or that, you know, they, they know it's um, uncomfortable and it's not nice. It's yucky. I kind of use that word yucky um, for the younger kids. It can be um, irritating when we say, I, I see you're feeling really upset about this, or I get you're so mad right now. Often kids will, some kids will say, no, I'm not, I'm not mad. <laughs> and you can see it written all over their face and body. And yet they refute it, right? They refuse, they, they deny and everything. So as I said before, um, when we're emotionally hijacked, our logic is kind of going offline. We don't have access to that logical, rational part of our brain where we see reason and things make sense and we can rein in our behavior and things like that. So I want you guys to imagine if your spouse um, met you, came home after a day at work and you'd had a shocking day, everything had gone wrong and um, your boss had given you all this extra work, which was completely unfair and you were venting about it and your partner said something like, um, you must be so frustrated. I can see you're so frustrated about all this work that your boss has given you. 
he'd be like, what's wrong with you? Ugh, like, of course I am. Why, why are you even saying that? Like, that's so ridiculous. That's unhelpful. You might even feel like it's being a bit psychologist-y. Um, <laughs> so, um, and also maybe a bit fake. I'm not saying that, like, sometimes I like it when, you know, my p husband gets it and he reflects that back to me. I'm talking about when we have kids who do not want to hear how they're feeling, even though they're feeling that way. So some ways to flip it. My biggest um, suggestion or, or a piece of advice is to get away from the you, the focus on you, you feel, you, I can see you are, okay? So we want to focus more on the situation um, and what's happening and how they're feeling rather than the person and their emotions and how they're responding or reacting in this moment. So it's a bit of a nuance, right? Um, people in these stressful um, situations, we don't want to feel like analyzed, right? We want to feel acknowledged. So there's kind of a big takeaway. We, our kids want to feel acknowledged and like we get it and like we're on their team not like we're not not like they're being analyzed um like this big parent up here to the poor little um child who doesn't know how to handle their emotions right i often encourage parents to kind of come alongside their child um navigating through that storm of the yuckiness or the anger or the anxiety whatever it is come alongside them which is not like oh i can see you're feeling this way it's like ugh, it feels so yucky when blah 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 so here are some examples instead of saying you look really frustrated, right? Instead of saying that, we could say, not getting a turn of the remote is so frustrating. So I've taken it and kind of shone my light more on the situation rather than the child or the person and their feelings. Another example is, instead of saying, I can see how upsetting this is for you, because that kind of feels like for you, this is upsetting. Maybe for someone else, they could handle it. I don't know. So instead of saying, I can see how upsetting this is for you, my child, being called a butthead is so upsetting. That is not okay. Hurtful, whatever, whatever word, um, frustrating, angry, All right? Um, instead of saying, you seem really worried about the test. I can see you're so worried about the test. We could flip that to test can be scary it's normal to worry about whether you're going to do okay or not. So the test, focusing on that and the situation, and it's normal to worry. It's not, I see you're so worried about the test. Um, my last one is instead of, you must be so hurt about not getting invited to the party, or whatever it is. Instead of that, we could flip it to, it's really hurtful when you feel left out of something. I know, it really sucks being left out. Okay, so we're trying to focus less on our child and telling them how they feel and mirroring that because that can just sometimes make things worse and focusing on the situation and maybe even also what we would feel or what's so normal to feel in that situation. Remember, it, it feels um, so, so validating when someone else goes, you know what, I would feel exactly the same. I don't want to go to work today. Some days I wish I could just quit and still get paid. <laughs> so it feels so good when someone else goes I get it I think I'd feel the same that sucks that's not okay and so on so I hope that makes sense people want their feelings acknowledged not analyzed same for adults as for kids right so maybe take that focus off the child and that you notice how they're feeling because sometimes sometimes that can blow up in our face and it can make things 10 times worse. And we'll get a, no, I'm not, no, you're mad, I'm not mad, <laughs> I'm calm. <laughs> I've had that, I've had that. We're all human, we're all doing the best we can as parents, but I hope that kind of gives you a little bit of um, something to think about and something, just another kind of tool up your sleeve in your parenting journey. All right, see you guys next time.